Welcome to Complexity Made Simple. My name is Paul Allen and before we get into today's video well I'm just going to remind you the three books that are on sale drink tea and read the paper if you're a green belt and a black belt and you want simple instruction on how to apply your skill design of experiments for 21st century engineers and finally a statistical process control for small batch production. They are all available from lulu.com and the links are in the video below. Welcome to the latest video and in this video newsletter well we're going to address the idea of Six Sigma. All right so we're going to talk about Six Sigma is a statistical number specifically. So I know that the phrase Six Sigma, people talk about it being a, uh, a business strategy and all kinds of different things. But some people just, they just concentrate on the statistical element of Six Sigma. And that's all we're going to do in this video. So we're just going to take a look at what is, I'll use the, I'll use the word rather than the symbol. What is Six Sigma? So statistically, what is it? Now really all it is, is a ratio. Um, it's basically telling you how well process results fit inside a tolerance. So if we did this sensibly with a simple tool that you all use, which is a run chart, you got the run chart with a set of a set of results you've got some tolerances that you're trying to hit what would a six sigma process be essentially well the natural spread here the natural spread of the process results would only take up half the specification width. So in other words, there's room here and there's room there. All right, so, so practically, if you looked at it on a graph, you would see room, you would be well away from the tolerances and you would be perfectly, you would be perfectly happy. But what we like to do is to take that data, turn it sideways and look at it as a distribution. And what we're, what we're basically saying is, of course, this spread here only takes up 50% of your tolerance. Okay. So that's, that's really what Six Sigma means. It only takes a 50% of the tolerance. But where does the, where does the Sigma come from? Well, Sigma is a measure of spread. It tells you how wide this thing is. So if I draw, if I draw these two, let's say this one here, if I work out standard deviation, which is what Sigma is. So standard deviation, what, where, where sigma comes from because the Greek letter means standard deviation if we had a standard deviation of 1 here the spread of the results would be 3 in that direction and 3 standard deviations in that direction so this would have a spread a range of 6 this one on the other hand has a bigger standard deviation, it's got more spread. So when we work out the standard deviation, the average spread for this, maybe this one has a sigma of two. So now if I go three standard deviations this way, three standard deviations this way, the spread of this process isn't going to be 6, it's going to be 12. 
So you can see that by working out the standard deviation, I'm also learning how much spread there is in my data. All right, so very straightforward. So what does what does six sigma mean? So it obviously it relates to this sigma here. It relates to what does six sigma mean? Well, if I hold those two processes up to a tolerance, so let's say I'm trying to hit zero, and I can go as low as minus six, and I can go as high as plus six. This distribution is going to fill that. because we have a spread of 12, we have a spread of 12, and therefore it's going to fill it. Now, all we're basically saying is, how many times does the sigma fall in here, look? One sigma, two sigma, three sigma. That's a three sigma process. The CPK is equal to one. The sigma value is equal to three, all right? So that we're using this number instead of this number. But if I held this distribution up here, what would I see? Well, of course, I've got the same tolerance, but now I've got half the spread. How many times can I fit sigma in from here to here? Well, I can get it in six times. So it's a ratio. It's a ratio of how fat the distribution is to how wide the tolerance is. And up here, by the way, the CPK up here equals two, and the sigma level, don't want that on the end that, equals six. Right, so you can see that by halving the standard deviation, you double the CPK, you double the sigma level. So it's up to you. You can use CPK or you can use sigma. Obviously, if you reduce the standard deviation even further, so if we had a, a distribution where the standard deviation was, let's say it was 0.5, so half as big again as this, how many of these standard deviations can I get in here? Well, now I get twice as many. This would end up being 12 sigma. But what it's basically telling you is how well does your process fit inside your tolerances? And what it's also telling you is, and this is why we're aiming for above three, it's telling you how much space you've got here. Because the likelihood is your process will wander to a lesser or greater extent partly because you can't see really where where your process is sitting you're taking samples remember and one data point you're going to take one data point out of here then you're going to take another data point then you'll take another data point you're taking single data points and the chance that you're going to see every last little movement of your process and get it perfectly centered is really pretty pretty low chance that you're gonna be able to do that. So you're gonna be a little bit off center with this thing. Well, if you're gonna be off center, here look, if we were off center, we would immediately start making defects. Whereas here, if we're off center, we're still safe. And that's really, we're trying to, we're trying to reduce the variability and push the sigma level as high as we can, push the CPK level as high as we can really. This should always be hit the target, reduce the variability, and ignore the tolerances. The more consistent your process gets, the more money you will make. That's just a basic law of physics. Um, and that's what sort of Six Sigma's pushing you towards. You can use CPK as well if you want to use, aim for a CPK of two. That's also pushing you in that direction. The car industry, for instance, has gone from asking for a CPK of one to asking for a CPK of 1.33 to asking for a CPK of 1.67. Can't be too long before they ask for a CPK value of two. So what are they doing? They're basically asking you, hit the target, reduce the variability and cars are becoming more and more and more reliable. From the days in the 1970s when they were a, um, a complete waste of space, 
lots of maintenance needed, lots of time scooping them up from the side of the road. The car industry has improved their product enormously. How have they done that? They reduced the variability. So reduce the variability, improve your sigma level. Sigma level is a measure of how wide your results are compared to how wide your tolerances are. And the, the higher the sigma level, the tighter your results are getting, the more consistent, the less defects you're making, and the more money you're going to make. That is Sigma level.